Module 7 Instant AP Mesh, Wired Access, and Uplink. In this module, we'll do a basic introduction, look at the mesh setup for IEPs, outdoor mesh options, we'll look at the wired access options as well as the wired access configuration, we'll look into uplink options and the configuration. Mesh allows the uplink to be Wi-Fi and not a physical cable. Wired access allows the configuration of Ethernet ports on the IEPs. If the IEP has only one port, then that port must be used as the uplink, unless the IEP is using Wi-Fi as an uplink. There are three choices for uplinks. Ethernet, 3G, 4G, and Wi-Fi. Mesh solutions can be used indoor to provide connectivity where there may not be an easy wired infrastructure to deploy in a facility. Mesh solutions may also be used to link buildings together. Mesh has a secure link between mesh nodes. As long as the mesh IP can see another IP, it can make a mesh connection. Mesh can be managed from the VC or Airwave Central, just like any other IP in the cluster. To understand mesh, let's first define the terminology. A mesh portal is an IP that has a wired uplink into the network. A mesh point is an IP that is not wired into the network, but it is using a radio link to the mesh portal as an uplink to the network. This radio uplink is called a mesh link. If the mesh link has been configured to use the 5 GHz radio, then the traffic between the mesh IPs is using this band. But wireless LANs can also be configured on this band giving client access. All of the IPs will show up on the virtual controller as a mesh portal. To create a mesh point, the IP must first join the virtual controller group. The IP will receive the configuration from the virtual controller. By disconnecting the IP from the network, this IP will automatically become a mesh point and start looking for a mesh portal in its cluster. The IP mesh only supports two hop counts. The extended SSID option must be disabled. This reduces the supported SSIDs from 16 to 6. The auto join feature must be enabled for this to work. This feature is enabled by default. After the IP has joined the virtual controller, it can be physically disconnected and moved to another location where it can be powered. The IP will then look in the original cluster for a mesh portal. The IP will join the cluster and will advertise the same SSIDs as the other IPs in the cluster. The mesh point will use the same channel as the mesh portal. When the extended SSID is enabled, the mesh capabilities of the IPs are disabled. The first step of the mesh configuration is disabling the extended SSID function. This is done in the advanced option of the system administration GUI. You must reboot the IP cluster for this to take effect. By default, the system supports up to 16 SSIDs. If you disable the extended SSID, then only six SSIDs are supported, which normally is more than enough. Common issues for which mesh links can't automatically resolve can be debugged by taking the following actions. If two IP clusters are in proximity, you may have caused an error and the mesh IP is in the other cluster. Mesh will not work if the extended SSID is not disabled. The IP mesh has no mesh SSID. The mesh point should have an uplink to the network. If the mesh portal is using a static channel, then the mesh point must also use this channel. 
make sure the mesh IP is within radio range of the IP cluster. You can check if the mesh point is attempting to establish a mesh connection. Two commands that are helpful is show AP mesh neighbor to see the other IPs and show AP mesh link to see the establishment of the mesh link. The IP175 and IPs 274, 275 are capable of withstanding harsh outdoor conditions. These IPs will also use the mesh technology as explained in the previous slides. It would therefore be extremely easy to link multiple buildings together. The proper antennas and outdoor deployment procedures are still required. Wired access. You can configure the wired ethernet ports on IEPs as access ports or as a trunk with native VLANs and allowed VLAN settings. You will need to specify those VLANs in the uplink switch. An IEP with multiple ports can have per port configuration. Some IEPs have five ports like the RAP155 and other APs have single or dual ports. The ACAPs have dual ports, but both are typically used as uplinks. The configuration done on any port is for the entire cluster. Therefore, if port 1 is configured with 802.1x and firewall policies, this would apply to all IPs in the cluster on port 1. From the More tab, select Wired. Select the Wired Network Profile for each port. Any configuration done on port 0 is ignored if the port is used as the uplink. To create a new profile, simply click New for the new wired network profile. A window will pop up and you have essentially the same wizard setup as demonstrated before for the wireless LAN setup. In the wizard, you can assign the port VLAN mode, trunk or access, assign the client IP assignment method, and choose the authentication method MAC and or .1x and authentication servers. And finally, you can set the firewall rules. Some IEPs have five ports like the RAP155 and other APs have single or dual ports. The ACAPs have dual ports but both are typically used as uplinks. The configuration done on any port is for the entire cluster. Therefore, if port 1 is configured with 802.1x and firewall policies, this would apply to all IPs in the cluster on port 1. From the More tab, select Wired. Select the Wired Network Profile for each port. Any configuration done on port 0 is ignored if the port is used as the uplink. Uplink Options Ethernet 0 is an uplink by default. There are two other choices for uplinks, 3G and 4G or Wi-Fi, both of which must be configured. You can also set up more than one uplink and specify what uplink is enforced as the main uplink. If the main uplink fails, you can preemptively select a second and third choice as backup links. Preemption can be set if the main uplink returns to service. There are three choices for uplinks. The Ethernet port is used by default. From the System and Uplink tab, you can configure the 3G, 4G, USB and the Wi-Fi settings. There is a priority list where you can enforce a specific type of uplink. If the main uplink uplink fails, then the IP tries to find the next available uplink. If the main uplink recovers, then preemption would return to the main uplink. From the home page, you can see this IEP's uplink type and status. In this module, we saw the mesh setup. We saw the outdoor mesh options. We look at the wired access options for the various Ethernet ports that IEPs can have. We looked at the wired access configuration. We then look at the three uplink options, Ethernet 0 used by default, but also 3G, 4G access and Wi-Fi 
can be used for uplinks and how to configure those particular types of uplinks. Thank you.